So how do you build a PC? I guess we're going to find that out together, aren't we? I'm here at SCAN in Bolton. For those watching in the US, think about this place like the equivalent to like a micro center, an NZXT, the kind of store that does a whole lot of things in the world of computing, but their bread and butter is gaming PCs. And you can get these in several different flavors. You can either buy the pre-built straight out, you can even pay to watch them build it on the live stream, or like I'm about to do, you can just come down and build it yourself. Now, I've got to be transparent about something here. I've never actually built a PC from scratch, but I do have my own personal scam bodyguard who's currently behind the scenes, who will either nod his head <laughs> or shake his head if I'm doing something horrendously wrong, which I believe I won't. If my primary school friend who no word of a lie, I saw him eat so much glue when we were in class, can build a PC, then I can too, surely. So what I'm looking at right here is all the pieces that you will need to build a PC on a pretty sweet little turntable. Now to sum it all up, basically, you're gonna need a CPU for all of the computer processing stuff. You're gonna need a GPU for all the gaming. RAM to help with the multitasking, the SSD to like store all the games and files that you've got. But essentially what you would do is you take these two screws off, you would take the peel off of this heatsink, pop it in, make sure you've got the riser on it as well because you don't want the SSD to bend back, pull it all in, screw it all in, job's good. And then of course, you're gonna need the whole motherboard to put everything onto. Thermal paste to put on the CPU to then place the cooler and its fans. Then a power supply to, well, power at all. You can see that scan has already done me quite the favor. And of course, as you see, a case to put everything into. And probably the most essential bit is the screwdriver. Now, just to let you know what I'm using here, this is an ATX case, probably going to be the easiest to build into the best to kind of like expand upon as well, modularity to it as well. Oh, wait, it's me back in my room again. And I just wanted to give you some tips on how to pick the right components for what you want to do. I want you to think about the components that you choose kind of like a full hose pipe system because you need to make sure you get the right balance of things going through so that you're making the most of everything that you've got. The nozzle for the hose pipe is your GPU. Obviously, don't spray water through your graphics card. The bit in the middle, the hose pipe, that is going to be your CPU. If you've got a big nozzle on the end, like a 5090 or something like that, you're going to need a good industrial strength hose pipe in the middle to be able to support all the water to go through to that nozzle and use it to its fullest extent. But if you have something more baseline to mid-range, then you're not going to need that industrial strength pipe. Kind of a waste of money. So you could go something lower than that. And then the power supply is the tap. And if you don't have enough power coming from that power supply to go through all of the other components, you're gonna run into some problems. And like I said, it's about finding a good balance between all of these things to make sure you get the most bang for your buck. And then in terms of like calculating the balance between the CPU and the GPU, what you could do is Google search Bolnet calculator. There's hundreds of them and they are kept well up to date with the GPU's demands and the CPU's demands. So you can see whether you're gonna get just the right zen light balance between the components. Anyway, back to me building the PC. It's best to build on the motherboard outside of the case. Obviously each motherboard's going to be a bit different. So for example, on this one, I've got the ASUS Tough Gaming B50E plus Wi-Fi. Can't forget that bit. And in terms of some of the way that these connectors down at the bottom are going to be labeled on some of these motherboards that will differ by brand. Make sure that you're checking the supplier manual to kind of see how things are differently labeled on each motherboard. It's time for probably the most delicate bit, which is installing the CPU. Now the CPU is gonna be smack bang in the middle here, but there is a shield on this. Do not touch it and do not lose it if you need to ever sort of like return it under warranty or anything like that. If you don't have this, they will not take it. This is protecting the pins underneath and they're incredibly sensitive, so do not touch them. And just gently lift that up to reveal the pins. Like I said, no touchy. You will see a gold triangle to kind of, I mean, tell yourself, 
which way this CPU is going to go. And you're going to correspond that with the triangle on the actual CPU area. Once you've got those matched up, what you will then do is just very carefully line it up and it should sit completely flush. You can then close the lid and then put the CPU brace arm back down and then that will come off. Next up, it's time for the RAM sticks, but the most common mistake is that the RAM sticks are kind of put closer to the CPU, as if people are thinking that's going to be kind of like the same as that when you put the GPU closest to the PC. The assumption is if I put them in here, it's closest to the CPU, so I get the most speeds, whereas actually that's not the case. What you could actually do is essentially half the speed of your RAM. You're not getting those high transfer speeds. So the common rule of thumb with installing RAM is that you put it in slots two and four if you have two sticks. So what you're gonna do on slots two and four is just open up the clips and then you're gonna take a look for the little slit and you're gonna line it up with the line that goes on here. Give it a bit of a push down and you'll hear a pretty satisfying click. And then once again, with the second stick, this is all very therapeutic, isn't it? So we need to keep it cool. And you've got two options. A, and probably the most cost-effective and easiest one to install is a fan cooler. B is an all-in-one liquid cooler. Now, for an AIO cooler, you're going to want to install that after you've put the motherboard in so that you can like measure it all out properly and make sure that it's all in there. But with a fan cooler, given it's much smaller dimensions in this way, you're going to want to put it on now. That way it saves you a lot of hassle of just having to kind of like try and eye it up when you've got it in the case. So you're going to start with what's called the risers. This essentially suspends the CPU cooler over the top so that the contact point will just be the bit that's supposed to cool it. Luckily for this one, there is instruction manuals and stuff like that that you can follow, but then also on the back of it, they've been very kind as to put specific labels on it so you know where it's supposed to be pointing to. And for those who are curious, this is a Noctua CPU fan cooler. So what you'll do here is you'll start to put on the standoffs just to raise the cooler here. And then same again on this side and this motherboard, the zero millimeter hole. And then when you've got the bracket on, it's time to figure out how the cooler is going to make contact with the CPU. Because if you have two pieces of metal touching without any sort of way of transferring thermal energy from the CPU to the cooler, you're gonna have a very bad time. And chances are your house may smell like burnt metal for a little bit. And that is where thermal paste comes in. But the general advice that I have always followed is just to apply a pea-sized amount right in the middle. I know that we've put this straight in the middle, but the contact between this and the CPU will spread it out anyway. Yep, and once you've eyed it, screw it in. It's good practice to kind of alternate between sides as you screw it in as to not bend one side more than the other. Not necessarily the worst thing in the world if you do, but also you're spending a lot of money on this stuff. So obviously it pays to be careful. And then once you've screwed it in as tight as you possibly can, it's time to put these two fans on here to ensure that there is an airflow that's going through this radiator in order to keep the CPU cool. Also good general practice with fans. Usually it is the logo side of the fan that the air comes out of. So if I'm to do this, you'll notice that the air kind of comes in one side and out the other. Also good to know for like case fans and stuff like that. And with this clipping mechanism, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that this bigger bit goes over this ridge in the cooler. And that is exactly what we're going to do. We'll sit it nice and flush. And now you have a motherboard bit that is starting to look a bit more like a PC. Nice. And now before we do anything else, we wanna make sure that this is plugged into the motherboard so that the fans go whirr when I turn the computer on. So we've got a splitter. We'll go ahead and connect this all together. Give them a bit of a wiggle, give them a bit of a push to make sure that they're in. And then you're gonna to wanna to go for the CPU fan header, which as you can see labeled on this motherboard is that bottom one. Click it in, sorted. 
So now that we've got this bit sorted, the best way to do this going forward, given the heft of the graphics card, is to put this in the case first, as to ensure that you can have this laying flat and you can make sure you've got a proper connection with this, while also sorting out your cable management around the back. 99% of the time, your case is going to come with fans, but in the situation where they don't, you're going to need to get some additional fans and you gotta think about that airflow. Remember what we talked about with the CPU cooler. Whichever way the logo is facing, the air is going to come that way. So in this computer, you're gonna get the full airflow kind of coming through and out the back. So long as you're thinking about this stuff and keeping it thermally efficient in that way, you're gonna be just fine because the last thing you wanna do is cook your computer while trying to play Cyberpunk. Gently lay it down on its side. And one of the differences you're gonna notice in some of these cases is exactly where you're going to screw in the motherboard. So you'll notice all the screw holes that you've got here to place it into. Well, you wanna make sure that you've got the risers in the case to put the motherboard onto, because the last thing you wanna do is have all of this work on the back make contact with any of the metal of the back of the PC. Otherwise, that could cause some problems. And you're gonna to start to screw it in. For something like this, it definitely helps have like a long head screwdriver to actually reach in. And then once you have all the screws in, it's probably pretty good practice now to actually think about getting the cables through from the case into the motherboard itself you've got certain slots for certain things. So you will have a motherboard plug that has two cables that goes in and it goes up to usually this long ass one here, but it's, that will go through and power the motherboard itself. Then you have the CPU and PCIe plugs. When you go to something like this beast over here, then you'll find a direct 16 pin connector right here on this PSU, which goes around to this one, which is all the power that you will need. So we'll take the CPU plugs and as is conveniently being organized for us here, we'll feed them through this top bit. Make sure that you're lining up the actual shape of the connectors with what's going on in there. And then you'll take the 24 pin connector of the motherboard, feed that through the channel where it's gonna be closest to that as well, just to keep the cables nice and tidy. Once again, wait for that click, problem solved. And then it's time for the USB-A and USB-C connections onto the motherboard so that you can get the USB ports on top working just fine for you. You will just have to line up the groove on it with the groove in the socket. And then with this one, it's kind of hard to see, but like there's a slightly bigger corner edge of it. And if you match that to like the bottom of the port, then you'll be able to line it up. If you're not feeling it go in, try not to wrestle it in. You don't wanna break your motherboard. And now that we have a CPU, sticks of RAM, cooler, SSD, everything is plugged in. The power supply has all the cables going through, connected to the motherboard. The USB on the front panel is connected as well, including the power switch. Otherwise, we're not gonna be able to turn this bloody thing on. It's time for the main event. So first of all, let's see what we're dealing with here. We've got an RTX 5080, the ASUS Prime, with 16 gigabytes of GDDR7 video memory. This is, without a better way of saying it, a bit of a 4K gaming beast. So inside you get the pretty package. And I assume this is something along the lines of, thank you for buying. And then you get everything in an anti-static bag, which, interesting tidbit for you here. In terms of if you were ever to like upgrade a GPU or upgrade a motherboard, if you get like an anti-static bag with it, my recommendation would be to keep it and keep the box because you never know if you need to go back to that thing, but it's also good for preservation. You don't want to get too much like static electricity running through the components that you buy. So now that we've got the card unwrapped, I mean, look at that detail. Oof. It's going to go in the top PCIe slot. I know there's other ones, but 
top one, closest to the CPU, closest to the RAM, more PCIe lanes going to the thing. I'm going to take out these two slots so that the entire GPU back is accessible via an HDMI or the DisplayPort cable, which will be screws two and three. So these people are telling me I sound like I know what I'm doing. Let me know if you agree in the comments. So these braces come out. And now we go back to the RTX 50A. And now we're going to line it up with a satisfying click. The GPU goes in. Now, normally in these situations, if you need to get it out quick, there is a quick release switch back here. That's also a good indicator, like when that clicks, you know you're in place, but also give it a little wobble as well, just in case. And now those same screws that you took out to get rid of these back plates, you're gonna put those in to secure the whole thing down. And while you're here, before you forget, you might as well take that GPU cable and plug it straight in. Ladies and gentlemen, that is a gaming PC. Oh, wow. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> you didn't see me laughing about this off camera, but they got me a branded one. <laughs> Put the glass straight on. And then with the mother of all satisfying peels, the Tom's Guide test bench is now complete. And as you can see, ladies and gentlemen and MBs, I did not screw up my first PC build. It passed all of Scan's tests. And I would like to introduce you to the Tom's Guide test bench. I think I cooked here. So as you can see, got the custom glass side with the Tom's Guide branding. Also put my name on there, just in case anyone else on the Tom's Guide team tries to take it. You can take it from my cold, dead hands. <laughs> but I was about to take the side off and I can show you what we're dealing with here. So as you can see, it's not super RGB laden and that is kind of by choice. I've never been a fan of like the over flash it in your face kind of stuff. But on the B650E motherboard, you've got yourself a Noctua fan cooler. You've got the AMD Ryzen 7 9800X3D just underneath there. Two sticks, 32 gigs of DDR5 RAM. You've got the RTX 5080 right here. The SSD is just hiding underneath this heat sink going on down here. Powering it up, you've got the Corsair RM850 EPSU. And this is all housed within the gorgeously refined fractal case that comes with triple fans on the front as well. Now, obviously in the guide that I did with you, I showed you all the steps except for three, which are kind of critical to the build. Number one is installing the power supply. Number two is plugging in the fans of the case. And number three is all the cable management you do around the back. And that was because Scan had already had all of that pre-prepared. Shout out to Klaus for helping me with that. But of course, I'm keen to provide those additional steps if you need them do go ahead and let me know in the comments and I can build something else completely from scratch. I've been Jason England. Subscribe to Tom's Guide for more. And I'll see you in the next one. Take care. The general advice that I have always followed whenever I've been switching CPUs oh. is to take the cap off. <laughs> Sorry, mate. <laughs> I've been Jason England. Subscribe to the com... Sub <laughs> How do I even say it wrong? <laughs> Editor, make sure you're cutting around me making all these mistakes. <laughs>